Listen, everybody, to the word I have to say. Better get ready. This is Daniel White IV, and for my father, Daniel White III, with the Second Coming Watch update. This is update number 487. Let's take a quick look at today's prophecy-related headlines, which point towards the Second Coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the end of the world as we know it. First, according to the Washington Post, several hundred troops in green camouflage without insignia and carrying military-style automatic rifles entered and secured areas of the civilian airport in Crimea's regional capital of Simferopol early Friday, and they deployed elsewhere, drawing protests from the new Ukrainian government against what it called a Russian invasion. Video taken at the scene showed the troops patrolling inside the airport and standing guard outside. Flights continued to operate and no shots were fired. In an unscheduled appearance at the White House on Friday afternoon, President Obama said the United States is deeply concerned by reports of military movements by the Russian Federation inside Ukraine, and he warned that there will be cause for any military intervention. He added any violation of Ukraine's sovereignty would be deeply destabilizing. Second, according to Israel Today, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed that his government would not alter the status quo regarding the Temple Mount, a day after Israel's Knesset held its first ever debate on extending Jewish sovereignty over Judaism's holiest site. The Prime Minister's spokesman said, The policy of the government of Israel has been and continues to be the maintenance of the status quo at the Temple Mount, including freedom of access for all faiths to the holy sites. The reason behind Tuesday's Knesset debate, of course, was that currently, Jews and Christians, all non-Muslims in fact, do not enjoy full religious freedom at the Temple Mount. Third, according to Israel National News, the Islamist Basij military force in Tehran ran a special military exercise on Thursday and Friday, preparing for an Iranian takeover of Jerusalem. The exercise entitled March to Jerusalem included training in the event of such a takeover, drills for the protection of cities, assistance and rescue, dealing with social unrest, the protection of sensitive and important military centers, dealing with the invasion and landing of Israeli forces from helicopters, and carrying out complicated tactical maneuvers at night. In an official statement, the militia said that the exercise is designed to develop and enhance the capabilities of the al Mahdi's brigades, improve besieged military competence, and foster a self-sacrificing spirit among the terrorists. The group's commander said his forces need to be, quote, prepared now more than ever for the great liberation battle for Jerusalem, which would avenge for the blood spilled by Western powers. Fourth, according to CNN, North Korea launched four Scud missiles into the sea off its eastern coast on Thursday. The missiles were fired in the direction of Russia and fell into the sea, according to the Pentagon, which described the launch as very low-level matters. The missiles were fired just days after the start of annual joint military exercises between South Korea and the United States, which North Korea opposes. The joint military exercises routinely spark tension between North Korea, South Korea, and the U.S. Fifth, according to the Times of Israel, in the wake of Monday night's alleged attack by Israel on a Hezbollah arms convoy, the organization's chief, Hassan Nasrallah, warned key military personnel of the possibility of war with the Jewish state. A Lebanese journalist with close ties to the organization said on Thursday that Nasrallah warned that Hezbollah's readiness against the Israeli enemy has nothing to do with other battles. He told his party's military personnel in closed meetings that Hezbollah may be forced to wage a battle on three fronts at the same time, in Syria, inside Lebanon, and against the Israeli enemy. Israel put its troops on the northern border with Lebanon on high alert on Wednesday, shortly after Hezbollah threatened retaliation for the alleged Israeli airstrike. Jesus Christ said in Luke 21:36, Watch ye therefore and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Our second coming quote for today is from Martin Luther. 
He said, I hope that the day is near at hand when the advent of the great God will appear, for all things everywhere are boiling, burning, moving, falling, sinking, groaning. You can read these stories in more detail and get more prophecy-related news at secondcomingherald.com. If you are not ready for the return of Jesus Christ, may I encourage you to get ready today by receiving Him as your Savior. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you, so that you can live eternally with Him. Pray and ask Him to come into your heart today, and He will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Keep looking up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator. Even so come, O Lord Jesus. Yeah.